My name is Daniel Scott with Udaya.com, and this is Average Yoga, a series of easy to digest yoga tutorials for people who don't do yoga yet. Take what you like, leave what you don't, go at your own pace, and learn to build your practice from the ground up. If you're like me, human, your lower back hurts from time to time. In fact, I'd say 90% of people who start doing yoga simply come to the practice because they want to get rid of lower back pain, touch their toes, and feel better about their bodies. So obviously, the lower back is a really important thing to focus on in any practice, whether it's at home or in a class. Things to think about here is that oftentimes the lower back isn't so much tight as it's just not used often. So we don't know how to access our lower back, and we tend to do a lot more work in our core than we need to. It overcompensates for the back, and then as a result, the tension that you might need or the strength that you might need to make these movements happen isn't there. So we're going to work on small movements to create strength and awareness in the lower back, and then also a couple poses to have to release in the lower back to feel good about what's going on in your practice. So to begin, we're going to come lay on our bellies. So <clears throat> find yourself in a nice, comfortable, prone position, making whatever adjustments you need to feel comfortable lying on your belly. And then, you know, we worked on sphinx in another video. You can be here, but try to take, when, the moment you start lifting the chest, it puts the weight into the center of the back or even in the upper back. So lower it down so you're more on your forearms like this. Untuck the toes, feet flat on the ground. Keep the feet maybe hip distance apart, maybe even slightly wider if that's more comfortable. And then from here, keeping the foot extended, begin to lift Engage the thigh so the knee starts to lift off the ground and then use that to lift the foot off the ground. Now, right off the bat, if you reach back and touch your butt, you're going to find that the butt is engaged. If you feel, if you reach back and grip it and you realize, oh, I'm like being a little bit of a hard ass right now, soften your butt. That's the difference right there. When you start gripping in the butt, you take the, all the weight of that you're trying to put, all the awareness you're trying to put in your lower back and you use your legs instead. We overcompensate. So try to lift your leg not by engaging the butt, but by using your lower back a slight bit. It's a very subtle feeling. You're going to feel more awareness in the mid-back, but behind the back ribs towards the hips. So just try two or three lifts without engaging the butt cheek to lift that leg on each side. <sighs> it's a lot harder than you think, especially because you don't realize how much you engage your butt to make these movements happen. Now, what are you feeling in your core when you do this? Well, if you push your core super hard, it engages the butt. Have a gentle lift in the navel, and you might find that lift in the navel softens the muscles in the front and helps you find a bit more awareness in the back. So do a three or four little lifts each side. Now, taking the hands under the shoulders, maybe even take the hands back, extend the arms, fingertips down. You can have the forehead on the ground. For the sake of this video, I'm not gonna do that because I'd like to talk to you as opposed to just talk at the ground. Fingertips down. And then try that same movement, lifting not from the butt cheek, from the back. Just a few more times. And it might not feel like much. So maybe if this is the first time you're doing it, don't do more than that. Just spend five minutes just doing small leg lifts in the beginning and see how your back feels later in the day. If you wake up the next morning and think, oh, okay, cool, this didn't really, like I feel some more strength back there, you can start upping the game and trying different things. From the hands in the back, legs extended, maybe you can try both legs at the same time. Now, before when you use one leg, you can actually use the leg that stays on the ground to help lift. So the moment you start using both legs, it becomes a lot more aware of how your butt totally grips and how your lower back starts to feel a bit more strength necessary in order to lift these thighs. So something to work on. Hands behind, fingertips lifted. You can lift the chin if you want, but more pull the nose away from the ground. And just try three or four lifts from the thighs and the legs without clasping the butt. So if you need to poke yourself in the butt, say, okay, that's working. Whew. Bring the legs back down, lower the head. Take a moment, shake your hips out from side to side. If you want to push your forehead on the back of your hands, it's totally doable. So this idea, well, the pose we're working towards is called 
locust or shalabasana. If the hands are on their shoulders, that's one way. If the hands are back by the hips, that's another. If you can interlace the fingers or even grab the wrists or even have a strap, you can use this. This ability to extend the hands back to lift the chest and then draw the navel up and then try to lift the thighs. And instead of doing thigh lifts, simply try to lift the legs, soften the butt, lift the chin, lift the navel, and find some strength here. Don't hold your breath. If you're holding your breath, it's totally counterintuitive to what you're trying to do. Take two or three breaths, inhaling and exhaling, without fighting with yourself, falling on your face, or farting. So the three Fs, fighting, falling, and farting, you want to avoid them. Big inhale here, exhale, relax and release. Forehead back to the hands, shake it out. <clears throat> Slowly bring your hips back to your heels. Child's pose is a nice counter pose to make the lengthening in the lower back feel good. And so right here, child's pose is a great way to kind of bring awareness to the lower back if you're using it. Navel draws in, round up the spine one vertebrae at a time, and come back to sitting up. Now, for a lower back opener, that's specific to just trying to feel like you can find some more space, Having a bolster and a brick is a really nice way of creating some opening in the back. Now, take into consideration that when you're trying to set up this position, it's less about how much of a drop and more about how, off, how comfortable you can get to have your hips hang away from the torso. So as you can see, I have the bolster just to the lower back. You can do this with a pillow. You can do this with some rolled up blankets. Bend the knees, feet flat on the ground and then lean back like this, extend the legs long. Right here, it's just this ability to have the tailbone lower than the ribs and the chest open. It might seem really comfortable, and in fact, it is. But the idea is that the more padding you have, the more drop of the hips, the more lower back release that you can feel. So you might want to do this with a brick under the bolster. You might want to have something else. You might want to use bricks in, in, by themselves. That's up to you to play with. And now sometimes using bricks isn't very comfortable. So that's why using those blankets. You can have a brick here along with the spine. You can have another brick here to support the head. Going slow, navel's drawing in. Unwind and find that spot in your back that feels good. Support the neck. And then allow yourself to let the shoulders hang, the palms be up. The ankles can be engaged or you can have the feet out to the side. And try to set this up that you feel that your lower back is releasing and opening up. And spend a few moments here, spend five minutes here. Allow yourself to <sighs> allow the body to relax and release and create length in the lower back. Variations you can do is that you can bring the feet together, knees wide. You can have the knees bent, feet wider than the hips and the knees falling in, or the legs wider here. Ultimately, what you want to feel is good. After being here for a few minutes, don't just try to pop up. Slowly, gently, easily bring weight back into the arms. Find a way to roll off to the side. Hang out here. Chill out. Check your phone. Send a text message. Totally opened up my lower back, bro. Feels great. Slowly come out. Ooh. And then check in. Again, small movements. The lower back, for me specifically, if I work too hard in my lower back thinking, oh, today I'm going to strengthen, the next day, or maybe even for the next few days, I feel it. So if this is a new practice for you, go slow so you can learn how your body reacts to the new movements that you're inviting in to build a strong foundation for the practice that's coming in due time. So how'd all that land for you? Hopefully it sparked a fire. And if you're looking to fan the flame, head over to dia.com and enter the promo code AVERAGEYOGA. J-O-G-A. You're going to have access to a lot more classes from myself and a host of amazing teachers from around the world of all shapes, styles, and colors. By all means, let this serve as a great foundation to build a home practice on that you can have for the rest of your life. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs>